FM. We have um, Andreas for his monthly talk here. Hello, Andreas. How are you doing? Hello. I'm fine. Thank you. Very well. So just a, a couple of um, checklists for people. If you want to ask a question from Andreas, raise your hand. You can also type the question in the chat if you like. And um, if you also have a question, on, if you want to join on, on the Zoom, there's a link on YouTube for you to click on. And Andreas, take it away. All right. Hello. Um, welcome. Welcome to the Zoom talk. Um, so one moment. OK, all right. So good evening. Welcome again. Um, what's this about? And I have to say, it's not really about anything, because it's not it's not a teaching, so to speak. I can't teach anything, and there isn't anyone to teach anyway on your side as well, because that's what this message is basically saying. There's just no one there. There isn't anything or anyone in here. So. Very simplified, one could say, this is a dream. Some, some people seem to have the impression that they are in here, so to speak, but that's just a complete dream. That's what this message is pointing to. And there seem to be all kinds of consequences from that illusion of separation. And when that sense of separation drops, those consequences drop with it, namely a sense of unfulfillment, the sense to be on a path, the impression to live in a real world, in a real separate world, those would all be parts of that dreamed reality, so to speak. And what this message points to is not something that happens within this reality. I'm not trying to help you to move on on your path. I'm not trying to help you to become or get anything because that's seen from this apparent perspective, that's just impossible because there is no one there. So this is not a personal event, so to speak. This is not a spiritual message. There is no one to help. There is no one who is separate, who may become fulfilled or who may find back his or her way into wholeness. It's just impossible because there wasn't anyone separate in the first place. In that sense, feel free to speak to me, though it's useless, and <laughs> feel free to write in the chat, though it's useless as well. <laughs> the whole seeking is futile, one could say. That's what the what what's um, that's not the person's experience, because in the person's experience, seeking seems to be absolutely needed. But it's just circling around within the dream. The attempt to do something, to seek something, methods, all that kind of stuff. It's just circling around this artificial center, this artificial I. And when this I dies, so to speak, all of it just goes together. But it's not a step, it's not a path. It's the turning out that there isn't anyone in the first place. <clears throat> this is what I would what I would call liberation, which is a story. <clears throat> All right. All right, I think that's about it from my side. So feel free to talk to me if you want to. Okay, Susan, is this a question? Uh, yes, yes, it is. Cool. Yeah. Great. Um, I'm sorry, I don't, I can't uh, get the video on right now, but um, I'll. Uh, you can hear me, so that's good. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I understand there's no one there, and you could say this is just icons on a desktop that we are, or whatever. It's just um, appearing, and uh, reality is something different, like maybe nothing or just energies or whatever. I get that. And there were, therefore, there's nobody 
here really in this in this body <laughs> no person as such i understand that too and um so so there's something there's nothing to seek that's right yes absolutely. it's almost like in we think there's something to seek but and we seek and then we find out there is nothing to seek there was never ever anything to seek but if you never seek then then you don't find out that there was nothing to seek you know it's almost like it's part of the journey although there's no journey and you know such is it's a paradox i i get that mm-hmm. um, it, it's just i mean i didn't yeah 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 it's so there is nothing to seek i i because there is no one there but if you never set off on the journey you don't realize there's nobody there you may just live a whole life thinking you are your thoughts thinking you are this creature thinking you are you know um and be completely believing in this false person that's not there you may live a whole life like that and uh, you could say live a life in ignorance which is bliss they say right but on <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time it's also um not knowing who you are and you're living like this false person your whole life and i don't know if there's something about uh, waking up to realizing you're not this person and how does that happen unless you 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 are seeking or, or figuring out something is not right i'm not this false person you know what i i don't know it's hard to express what i mean yeah well i i kind of get probably what you mean but i wouldn't i just wouldn't call liberation the realization that there is nothing to see really how i would see it is just the melting away of the separate setup but to me this is not connected to any kind of finding something or knowing who i am and that stuff so it would just be the melting away of the of the illusion that there is someone in the first place and this doesn't depend on seeking to me the end of i am is not the result of seeking it's the dropping of the seeking energy for no reason so in order for this me to drop seeking is absolutely not necessary on the other hand i don't say that seeking is wrong or that it shouldn't happen it's just futile and whenever there is the sense of i am there will be seeking that's inevitable so it's neither right nor wrong but it's futile it's just futile yeah so for some people the seeking may happen to find out oh there was nothing to seek for others it just happens without seeking for others it doesn't happen at all i mean who knows yeah yeah but but just to clarify i guess you mean spiritual seeking because everyone is seeking whenever there is the sense of a person there is some kind of seeking may it be in money in security in adventure in family and or in spirituality so i don't make a, a distinction between spiritual seeking and have making a co- having seeking in career or something for me this would just be seeking so yeah. in that sense everyone's a seeker every me is a seeker right but as soon as you attach a word to any thought or even the thought itself you're already in a way seeking you know it's it's like a natural thing of being a human to seek for food shelter and you know so it's kind of but but you see through that when when you oh, but, but i i mean the sense well, my impression is the moment there is self awareness the illusion of awareness there is some seeking for something higher or deeper i don't mean wanting food or go going shopping for me this whole seeking for something deeper in life is an illusion yeah okay yeah uh awesome and and you could say uh, a person 
um, wakes up to oneself when they realize there is nothing more than this. Yeah, but I wouldn't call it a realization and a waking up. It's just the death of separation. But nothing, in, I would say, nothing wakes up in that. It's just the end of the illusion that there is something separate. Yeah. So it's like falling asleep. <laughs> that's how I would, that's how I would call awakening. <laughs> falling asleep. Like in <laughs> The end of consciousness, the end of self-consciousness. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And all that's left is the natural reality, of course, but for no one, not not as an experience to anyone. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's clear. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. I mean, actually, you're saying the opposite, the, that effort brings about re a result. That's a dream. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so no. Speaking, if there was a necess necessity for speaking for the dream, non-existent dream to collapse is, is, is in the dream. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Of course. Of course. I mean, the thing is that there is a dream in the first place, is the dream, so to speak, that there is an I there never was an I in right from the start with. So this whole seeking thing doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. <laughs> of course, the moment you say, oh, there is seeking was needed or is needed, you start, you actually say, yeah, but there was a real illusion or there was a real separation or there was a real me, but there never was. So, yeah, absolutely. So there is a, a question in the chat. If there is no person, then Jesus never died on the cross. <laughs> yeah, that's good news. <laughs> Poor man, never died on the cross. <laughs> um, the whole thing he was saying was a story. Oh, well, the whole story was a story, of course. Yeah. Totally. Okay. Is liberation a total let go? Well, uh, yes and no. It depends on what you mean with let go, because it's not a state of letting go, or it's not an experience of letting go. It's kind of death, and death is when life lets you go, so to speak. It's not you letting go of something. It's not even you letting go of yourself. That would just be, that's dream stuff. That never really happens. It's death, just the end of self-awareness. If you want to call that a let go, why not? <clears throat> Andreas, can I ask something, please? Yes, please. This is about time or whether there is time or not. So if we talk about what happened earlier on today, that obviously doesn't give ev <laughs> that doesn't give evidence that there was a real time earlier previous to this time where that happened. It's just this appearing as a conversation about earlier on what happened. Yeah. Oh yes. So if all there is is this, which appears as past, future, and whatever, and it's not a moment or it's not the present, what yeah. is this in in a time way? How could you look at this? What's oh, appearing? Yeah. Oh, it's impossible. Because the moment you look at something, that is the illusion. That's why it's timeless. The moment there is something now here, ah, what is this? Then you have all of it. Time, separation, experiencing, self-awareness, a separate happening. And now. The illusion of time starts with now. I'm now here as an experienced reality, that is the dream. Does, has, so, doesn't have any reality at all. So it doesn't have a reality, meaning it never actually happens. So I never actually takes form. Oh yes, absolutely. You don't so experience. There is no experiencing now. 
Is that what you think? <laughs> no, I don't think that. <laughs> the concept. But the thing is, in the dream, so the eye never takes form. So that the, there is something here now which is present no. is, is the dream. Uh, yes. From the dream, there's a sense of their so, so, so when that apparent dream stops happening or is recognised as ever happening, then there's no longer anyone observing what's apparently happening. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes. And so when there's nothing happening, there's not a moment or a next moment or a previous moment. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Andreas, can you elaborate on the sentence, what is, never was? Yeah, well, one could say, what is, never was, something. That's it. When there is, when there is the sense of self-awareness, there is the impression, the feeling that something is happening. It really feels like that, as if something is going on right now. But it's exactly that sense of existence, that sense that there is something which is illusory. So when that drops, apparently, it turns out that there never was something going on. So in that sense, sitting in front of a screen and this whole thing is and isn't. It somehow seems to be happening but there is absolutely no one processing this or experiencing this to be something that happens. In that sense, this never was something that's going on. There never was some kind of happening, neither an absolute happening nor a relative happening, neither a big what is nor a small this moment, so to speak. There is no sense of existence at all, or the sense of existence is illusory. There's no existence. <clears throat> the illusory eye results in tension in the body. While there is nothing that I can do to end the eye, is there anything that the body-mind can do to be free of the eye tension? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I've never had that question. <laughs> it's, it sounds quite logical, actually. Well, if I can't do anything, maybe the body can do anything. <laughs> maybe I can't meditate, but maybe the body can sit down and meditate and so yeah no i'm sorry <laughs> <clears throat> because who would tell the body that it would need to sit down and <laughs> well, all right when you say this eye dies I assume that can't be true since apparently there is no I. Yes. Can you expand on the death or letting go of the I that never was? Yeah, you are absolutely right. It's hard to expand on that because it's a story. It never really happens. But how that is, I can't explain. I can't even really describe it. So impossible. The only story that might somehow fit is just falling asleep in the evening, the end of self-awareness. The only you only know as long as you're still awake. You never experience falling asleep, and you never experience having fallen asleep. So the moment you're awake. There's the illusion. And what we speak about is just the end of it. But there isn't anyone there experiencing it. And there isn't anything there knowing that it happened. 
because that's what liberation basically is. Death, having fallen asleep without waking up again. The end of the illusion that I'm now here, aware, awake, having a life, being present and all those things. But yeah, can't be this crime. <clears throat> Okay, comment. I am one with this chili cheese dog at lunch. Well, sounds good. Perfect. So no questions there. <laughs> okay, question. Is there a difference between your perception now and before me dropping? The seeing, feeling, not really, I guess, but there isn't anything there who could check out is it the same is it different i have no idea actually the, the the problem is that this whole story doesn't make sense me before and me afterwards so uh, this already is kind of difficult because when i look back apparently there isn't really a, a sense of something having happened that's the thing. So I don't really know what I would need to check. You know, how was it then? How is it now? That's it. <clears throat> okay, William. Yeah. So when you say there's nothing happening or nothing's happening, does that mean there's an apparent happening? but it's not something real. Yeah, that's difficult to say because no one knows that. On the one hand, that's what seems to be happening, but there isn't anything saying, oh, well, there is a happening, but it's not real. So, so yes, it's just, so in terms of like, because that body reacts to whatever apparently happening if i ask a question if somebody asks a question that body will read the comment and at, respond to it which happens on its own without the need to know what's happening but i think i know there's something happening so exactly but that's already the dream i don't really say there is something happening but you can't know it no in the end it's already unknown if something happens or not so the, the sense, body, the sense of pure existence already is illusory. So the body there responding to questions and comments is just like a toy or just, yes. do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a human stone. Or... It's just like, it's just an automatic function in that sense. Apparently, yes. Yeah. But no one knows this, but yes. It's just what seems to be happening, like everything else. Yep. And, and so when you hear in this message that everything is empty, or the appearance is empty, really, there's nothing within the appearance? N nothing. Yes, totally. Yep. It's not even an appearance. This is not an appearance. It's just blindly itself, which can't be known at all. As I say, it doesn't even know if it is. But you wouldn't call, you wouldn't call it nothing though. Well, whatever, maybe sometimes I do, but yeah. But no. you can't find a word to say what it is. Yes, because there isn't even an it in the first place. It's not that there's an it, but you can't know it. No, there is no it in the first place. So would it be accurate to say that nothing is knowable? Well, no. Well, you know what's accurate. I mean, the person would immediately think again, well, there is something, but you can't know it. <sighs> well, there isn't even something which can or can't be known. Okay, thanks, Andreas. Thank you.
Because the person quite easily would say, ah, yeah, it can't be known. Yeah, how is it? Yeah, it can't be known. But it's... There isn't an it in the first place. Okay. A question in the chat. I started a quest to gain understanding and lost everything. <laughs> Literally, my marriage career, <laughs> etc. <cetera. laughs> they, they were never real anyway, so. They didn't want to accept what I had come to accept. They all say I'm stupid and crazy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, well, it's not my, it's not my fault. But... <clears throat> okay. Andreas, are there any signs that show the dissolving is taking place? No, there aren't. No, there are no signs. No, no. Is this like living in a love affair? Well, I don't know. I mean, no. Every, I mean, it turns out that everything is love, so to speak, but it would be a blind love, a love that doesn't discriminate and a love that doesn't recognize itself to be love. It's unconditional love. What happens is unconditional love. But it's not just having an affair, you know. <laughs> That wouldn't really fit. Is there any solidity to anything at all? No, there isn't. There is no solidity. No. When you say there is nothing happening for no one, who is no one? Yeah. Actually, I mean, it's literally no one. And I know it's a bit weird to say this, nothing is happening for no one, because for the person, it always sounds as if this no one is still someone, as if nothing is happening for some kind of an awareness, for some kind of observer and stuff, but that nothing is happening isn't observed at all. There is no experience of what we speak about here. There is no awareness of what we speak about here. In that sense, it's literally for no one. It's not a weird description for some impersonal consciousness or something. There's just no experience of anything. And there is no experience of there being no experience. You know, the person so much hopes that it could be seen, wholeness, the end of me, completion, what we speak about, that at some point I come to the awareness that it is obvious for me that I see. But it's exactly that seer which is illusory. Nothing will be seen. Nothing needs to be seen. A question, isn't the individual self a unique point of experience? A point is nothing in itself. Well, that's how it experiences, but it turns out to, to not exist or it's, it doesn't have any reality. But that's how it feels for the person. I'm now here, that's a point, and I'm uniquely me, so yeah. That's how it feels. <laughs> this message is incredibly amazing to hear. <laughs> Gorgeous. <laughs> Yay! <clears throat> okay. Anyone raised their hand? No. The different speakers talked about a contraction in the body. When it goes away, the conversation, the conversation we have with ourselves 
stops automatically and the vision gets clear. That's how they describe it. If this is so, what you are talking about is something totally physical. If this is something physical, then talking about it wouldn't sense. It's like you have a toothache and talk about it. Do you think doing yoga or visiting chiropractic is better than talking about me or no me? Um, no, I think it would be as futile as this. It just wouldn't matter. But yes, talking about this is futile. It's itself, but it's not of any use. You can't use this. You can't use life. That's the illusion, that there is something useful. Of course, regarding this, this becoming, this seeking, becoming a fulfilled me. So, but I don't regard this as useful, just to be clear about that. <laughs> it's already whole, that's the thing. It can't be of any use because it's whole already. What you wanna get from anything, from this or from anything. <laughs> well, uh, that's, I don't know if this is a compliment. Andreas, you look like Jack Nicholson who acted in the movie, The Shining. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, question. Andreas, is not everything. Andreas. Well, isn't everything that is natural in this world real in a sense? And everything man manufacturers is illusionary? as far as this apparent existence goes? The hot dog comment was humor. Yeah, I thought so. Oh, no, I wouldn't say so, because there, there is just no distinction really between real, unreal, artificial, true, illusory. No, nothing is real, really, so. I wouldn't say so in that sense. Does the sense of I still sometimes arise in that body? Well, no, no, it doesn't. And it actually turns out that it never arose. That's liberation. When there isn't anyone anymore, then there is no experience of anything coming or going at all neither oneself, nor thoughts, nor the weather, nor feelings. There is just no sense of happening, of being, of staying, of coming and going, of moving on, of abiding somewhere. This all turns out to be part of dreams. Can I ask a question, Andreas? Please. Uh, um, so, what seems to be happening, this is one of the strange things about the way, I think maybe Jim speaks more like that than you, but I think you will understand that there's something special about the me, because the other things, that, that is less, <laughs> less real even than, than the things that are only seemingly happening. I mean, I, 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 there can be this uh, cup appearing, and 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 I would say also that that oh now I'm stuck. Do you hear me? I still hear you, but you still hear me. Okay, so the me can the the cup can appear, and and, uh, and then the, the me can appear. But it, you, I think you you would say there is a difference because there never was a me, but but the cup at least uh, well. I'm not good at expressing this question, but there, there seems to be a special and bad state for the, the me compared with all of the other things that can seemingly appear. Well, one could say, yeah, the me, the me never appears. What seems, well, the cup also never appears, by the way. It's just what's, what appears 
what's apparently happening. So for you, it's, it's the difference then? Well, the difference is that what seems to be happening is the illusion of me. You claiming, but I am someone, is like the cup. That's what seems to be happening. And for you, it feels as if there is a real me inside you because of that claim, but there never is a me appearing. It's just you, this body, claiming to be, I am me. And that's equal, equally the cup or everything else. That's what seems to be happening. That's real and unreal. But at no point there is the appearance of a me, of an instance, of an entity. It never happened, not a single bit. But you, this body, claiming to be someone is wholeness, like the cup, like the clouds, so like everything else. The cup is real and unreal. But no one knows this. Yes. Yeah, and, and, uh, but what about me then? If I say I exist, is that both real and unreal also? Or is that... Yes, it's... no, that's real and unreal as well. But there isn't anything that exists within that. You saying, but I'm a person, is as empty as the cup. It's okay. just what seems to be happening. By the way, I, I, I really enjoy your impersonations, you know, I, when you do this, I exist. <laughs> <laughs> I see the <laughs> tension in the whole body and, and some gesture, like a hero. I exist. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, yeah. So it's just equally whole. There is nothing wrong with that. It just is what it is. So whenever there is this sense, there is seeking and separate the illusion of separation, but it's just what seems to be happening. And there's nothing wrong about it. It's just wholeness as what seems to be happening. A cup, weather, and a body claiming to be a separate me. It's all right. Nothing can be done about that. Nothing should be done about that. There isn't anyone imprisoned into that. And there isn't anyone who needs to wake up from that. This would all be dream stuff. That's it. This is it. Exactly as it is. You, me, the screen. It's empty. Of something. Okay, John. Hi, Anders. I, I realize that um, uh, it, it's easy to sort of get fixated upon upon glimpses. Um, and I want to, I mean, I, I would like to just sort of allude to a, a glimpse that I, yeah, I think it was a glimpse that I had, but it was a very powerful one. And um, I would like you to help me understand what happened. Because, um, I mean, without going into details, I was having a piano class. I was trying to play a piece that was impossibly difficult for me, uh, especially the left hand. The left hand had to play tons of notes. And so my teacher said, okay, we'll take it at a speed that it becomes easy. So I played it a bit slower and he said, is that easy? I said, well, not really. He said, okay, take it at a speed where it becomes really easy. So I played it even slower. And he kept asking me until I got to the point where I was playing it really slowly. So the piece no longer resembled the piece as it was meant to be played. It resembled some sort of minimalist piano piece with one note every two seconds. And at that speed, at that speed, the piece became totally, a... totally easy. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, which, which is what sort of musicians attempt to. And, and so he encouraged me uh, to listen, just listen to the, the, the beauty of the sound um, that the piano was making and these harmonious sounds. And, and, and so I actually, I did, you know, how long did it last? I went through two pages of music. And when I came to the end, I realized that as, as has often been described, I was not there. I became the music, the music was me. There was nothing. I was, and, and when I came out of that, um, the teacher was clearly aware that something had happened. Uh, 
Mm. But uh, as I reflected afterwards, I don't think he was really aware of what happened. Mm. I knew he knew something special had happened. Mm. Now, my question is, um, uh, but that experience, even though it only lasted a short time, it, it feels very similar to um, what I've heard you describe and others. Okay. But my, my question is, it seems to me that in a sense, and, and I, I then tried to reproduce that situation, and of course it didn't work at all. Yeah. Um, but in a sense, I feel like that state was induced. And I know that there's nothing that you can do to induce the state of no me, because your me is trying to induce a state in which it is not there, which is inherently yeah. paradoxical. Yeah. But it sort of seems like, in a sense, that that state was induced through the words and the suggestion. Yes. <laughs> I'm supposed to say something now. <laughs> well, I, I would like you to tell me, because the thing is, I, I, I can see that the illusion that there was an induction there goes against all the things I hear about this state is not yeah. yeah i mean i mean the thing is that as long as there is someone or whenever there is someone that's just the impression that there is a real happening and that one thing leads to the other thing mm -hmm. so if you were there and then suddenly there wasn't anyone and then suddenly you come back mm -hmm. you of course think that what happened before led to this or this can happen, not it has to. For some people, it's quite obvious. Well, I didn't do anything, it just dropped. But it can also be the story that what happened before somehow led to this. Mm. It never really did, but in the end, it also doesn't matter. I mean, you tried it to regain it and it didn't help. And it didn't work. <laughs> so. So, so, so really what's happening is, is the, the me here is once again trying to construct a cause and effect chain. Oh, absolutely. For, for you, you, so to speak, are the same than before, kind mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. Or the me, let's say, the illusion of me is in the same position as it was before. Mm -hmm. Just saying, I'm now here and I still have to find something else. The position didn't really change from before to afterwards. No, I mean, in a very real sense, it didn't, because I was still sitting on the bench, still playing the piano, still trying to play that fucking piece. And it was, you know, <laughs> and afterwards, it went back almost to being as difficult as it was before, almost yeah. to being as difficult as it was before. But, but, I, but, but I still had had this invaluable experience in which I had really appreciated the beauty of that piece on, on, on some incredibly deep level. Uh, and it wasn't to do with the speed that it had to be played at officially and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't give you anything, but yes, that was what happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's useless now. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. Which is <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, comment. Nothing to separate out of what is to see it as other. Yes, absolutely. There is no separation. There's nothing to look at. This is the dream. I am looking at a world out there as something out there. Doesn't have any substance. In your daily conversations with people, do you bring this topic up or do you engage with people without bringing up this message? Oh yeah, it's not an issue. It's totally not an issue. This whole issue doesn't exist. So there is absolutely nothing to talk about. And what seems to be happening here is just rather an answering than bringing up a topic. If there would be no questions, there would be no, I wouldn't talk about it. 
never. It, there, would, there wouldn't be a need. There wouldn't be a topic. I'm not running around in my life having this as a topic. It has become a non-topic. Me, separation, liberation, becoming one and doing something, no matter, it's, it dropped. It's a, it's a completely dreamt topic, I am, and stuff like all around that. So no, there, there isn't anyone there. And there is no topping. Can this message be interpreted in a wrong way as nihilism? Oh, yeah. Yeah. People think that that's nihilism or another kind of philosophy or some kind of concept. But some people would regard this as nihilism also. Yeah. But it would be an interpretation which would automatically be a misinterpretation. <laughs> yes. Okay. If there is no solid solidity, what does Andreas feel when he walks on the floor? Nothing? No solid floor? Well, then I would just feel what I feel, but me feeling what I feel isn't solid as well. So it's not that I'm feeling something that's not solid. It's everything is not solid. Nothing is solid. The floor, me feeling the floor, this body, thoughts, feelings, stars, no solidity anywhere. It's not meant in a personal way. So the person might think what I say is that everything out there isn't solid. And in the end, the person would experience at least itself as solid. Maybe the floor isn't solid, but how does it feel as if the feeling is solid? But what this message is saying that this experiencing, which actually gives the impression of solidity, isn't solid as well. There isn't some real experiencing. There isn't a real experience. <clears throat> Is reality changeless? I actually believe so. Well, at least there is no real change. But there also isn't a reality which remains the same all the time. That would also be kind of boring, actually. So, yes and no. How is what you're saying different from deep sleep? No awareness, nothing happening, etc. I've asked before, and you said that's not what you meant quite the puzzle, no? Oh, it kind of is, because it is deep sleep. What we talk about is like deep sleep, meaning that there is no experience. Yeah, but what this also reports apparently is that when deep sleep doesn't end, when the body wakes up, it's just deep sleep going on. <laughs> which the person would regard as death, basically. Yeah, in that sense, it's deep sleep. No one there experiencing from a separate position. But it's absolutely incomprehensible at night already, but it's almost much more incomprehensible that it can just go on during the day as well. When the body walks around, when there is hearing and talking, and a, and, a, and a body that's doing stuff and still no one there experiencing it. It's incomprehensible. In that sense, I meant that it's not deep sleep exactly. It's just no one there as in deep sleep. Or well, obviously it's walking around, obviously it's doing Zoom talks, it's speaking. But for no one.
is there a contact address or email I might write to you on? I would love to correspond if you have time. Thank you. Yes, there's on my website. You can contact me. Yes. Um, 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 it's the timelesswonder.com. There you find everything. I was one, I was just wondering if Andreas has found himself just motorbiking yet. No, I don't do that. No, it's too dangerous if I do it. Okay, what is the role of Pakti, surrender, devotion play in awakening? Oh, it doesn't have any role. It doesn't play any role. It's just another seeking method. It's just the seeker desperately trying to do something. And it doesn't matter what it is, surrender, devotion, Pakti. It's another story. Okay, Susan, you want to say something? Yes, yeah, so you could say you just are and you are the unknown and you never attach any meaning to anything, you just unknown. Um, therefore, there's no seeking anywhere. You're just living as the unknown and you know you'll never know, and you are just the unknown. And in, in that, all that falls away about putting meaning to anything that happens or will happen or happens now, is just um, happening. And then for us uh, that are seekers in either materialism or spirituality or whatever it is, anything, um, we always respond to a thought emotion, word, concept, idea, whatever that is that appears, we grasp onto it and put meaning on it right away. And you don't. Uh, yes, but not because I am someone or something who somehow manages to do so. No, it autom the, uh, this, uh, all this stuff automatically ended when I ended. Yes. So in that sense, there is no experience of me just being. Right. Yeah. There's just what seems to be happening, but for no one. So yeah. there is no kind of experience here. And automatically, it's impossible to attach meaning. It's impossible to seek because the cause for seeking, the sense of separation, isn't there anymore. Right. It's not something that I attained or achieved or somehow managed. No, I just died and automatically there was no, no separation anymore. And I mean, even when I say I died, this may sound absurd because in some way it may still sound as if it had something to do with me, <laughs> as if really I, so to speak, died. Right. But um, how did that happen? Uh, not, not that we can copy how it happened to you that you died. Yeah. I, I'm just curious, like, how did it happen? Well, oh, well, I, well, that's the thing. In the end, I don't know. This last moment, I don't know, because I wasn't there anymore. But... Looking bad, uh, looking back, I somehow seem to have faded out over a couple of years, not noticing, of course, that I'm going to die. I thought I'm on a good path. But it ended with my death. Yeah. And was it like those couple of years bef before you fell away completely? Or, um, was it like you were constantly just not, you were constantly living the, in the unknown, you could say, you were constantly not putting meaning to anything, you were constantly... Or... Oh, no, no, because when I was still alive, I thought that I am someone who is on a path. I had been a spiritual seeker before those two years, and at one point, most of that just dropped, but then my experience was still, I'm now here, and I try to do the best out of my life, 
and still living in concepts and ideas like having an easy life is better than having a difficult life. It's about having fun. Life is about not thinking too much, live spontaneous, stuff like that. I still was, I still experienced myself as someone who is on a path. And I still thought that the actual thing would still happen. At least I thought that it would get better. I mean, my dreams of being enlightened and stuff, they also, they already collapsed, but I still thought that it's getting deeper, it's getting better, stuff like that. So. so yeah, so I can see you had nothing to do with it because you were still seeking and boom, it just happened, you fell away. Oh, until the last moment, whenever there is a sense of self-awareness, there is seeking. The last in-breath, the seeker will hope to survive the out-breath and be in the next moment, present, live. Of course, they were seeking until the end. <laughs> yeah, that's why you can do nothing about it, you know, just live and... Exactly. Yeah. Seeking and the end of seeking, there's no connection. It's not the end of seeking is not the result of the seeker's career. It's just the dropping of that for no reason, which theoretically could happen any moment. It doesn't need a certain amount of seeking. It doesn't need a certain amount of insights. It doesn't need any kind of spiritual seeking at all. It's just the dropping of it for no reason like that. Yeah. And in a way, so you just live your life and you just like, you know, Joseph Campbell, follow your bliss. I kind of like that because, you know, you just follow your bliss in life and do what you do and don't worry about anything. And then, um, yeah, that's it. That's all there is to Don't worry about anything. There'll just be what apparently happens. Yeah. It would be already the dream that there is someone just living his or her life. It's already only exactly happening as it is no one's yeah. no one's choice anyway right so we're making much about nothing <laughs> much yeah. about, we're making much about nothing and uh, like yeah trying to figure it all out and da, 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 da. and it, it's there yeah there is nothing to it's think. all part of the dream yes yeah the but it can also be fun like i'm sure you're enjoying this you know and it's just Maybe it's a fun part of the dream too, if you're interested in talking about it. <laughs> well, I don't say the seeker's life, which is a total dream, isn't necessarily bad. It contains all of it, bliss and desperation and happiness and stuff like that. That's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. And that's what's happening. Anyway. I mean, we can't help. We are here, right? So. It's well, you are not here, but I know what you mean, yes. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is wholeness. This is as good, good as it gets. There's yeah, absolutely right. nothing wrong with this. This and is it already. Yeah, and it couldn't be otherwise somehow because... Not a single bit. Yeah. The, seeker th the, the seeker thinks that I shouldn't be here. Because if I would be enlightened, I wouldn't need to listen to this weird guy. No, <laughs> this is it. Completely, totally. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I don't know who was first. Maybe Anita, ladies first. Yeah, William was first. But I, I have uh, only... Um... It's just there was already no one. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah, already. Yeah. It's not the end of a path. It's this the start. Mm -hmm. There isn't anyone here. Yeah. The seeker would turn this into a goal, like wholeness, fulfillment is somewhere there in the future. And I have to go there, being no one. Maybe one day I also will lose the art and all that stuff. Oh no, there's no one here already. Thank you. Thank you. 
but I don't say this to make it obvious for you because then it would be a teaching and a path. There isn't anyone who would still realize this. There is no realization of this exactly because there's already no one there. I'm not speaking to you or to anyone. Okay, William. <laughs> Andreas, I don't want the dream to end, but I don't want it to continue either. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> I know, I don't want to go on suffering, but I also don't want to die, really. Yes. So where, the, where, where can I go? Like, where is that? I know it's, it's a dream that there's anyone, anyone anywhere that can move somewhere else anyway, but... I'm not going to survive death, whether that's in the body or when the body dies. Oh, of course not. And the, the, the belief that, or the experience of the dream being real, me being real, is one of intense dissatisfaction and unfulfillment. So it's not even that one's better than the other. Yes, oh, exactly. There isn't one or the other. One or the other is already part of the story. Me and no me is dreamt. There is no me which could become no me. Yeah. There's nothing appearing as the dream of being someone. Yeah, no, that's just wholeness. And then we take that personally. Yes. Well, the person takes itself personal, personally. God, it feels no, awful. Yeah. It just feels awful that there's no hope at all. Oh, totally, of course. That's pure separation. The hope was just crutches, which makes the suffering feel a little bit better. Yeah, that's pure presence. I'm here, but nowhere to go. <laughs> if it would be real, it would be really a bad place. I'm now here. <laughs> uh, okay, thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, the, sometimes you say that, uh, wait a moment, Susan, you, you want to say something or is the hand still up? from before. Uh, yeah, no, no, uh, the hand was just still up. All right, good. Okay, sometimes you say that no thing can appear as the illusion of the me, not as the me, but as the illusionary sense to be a me. Can you say something about this? Because now you said something different. All right, okay. Uh, whew. Well, I was saying, I mean, maybe there's a there's a, a problem with the word appearing, because what the person would understand as appear is coming into existence, like appearing. But nothing is ever appearing. It's not that there is some kind of no thing somewhere floating, and this is appearing out of it. No. What seems to be happening is no thing. And that's what I try to cover, saying all there is is what apparently happens. But there is no kind of coming into existence. So when I say no thing appears as the illusion to be someone, doesn't mean that there is an, an illusion coming into existence. It's just what apparently happens which remains no thing. There is no process of creation at all. I think that's maybe what the, what the problem was, so to speak. It's this concept of appearing. Nothing ever appears in a sense of arising. <clears throat> that's just what apparently happens. Okay, Heidi. Yes, I'm here. So it's um, it's nice. I I remember that um, I've seen once uh, a sunrise like that, 
And um, there was a, a deep sadness inside because I, I realized that I cannot see what this is. Even if I share it with people, even if I am together with people to look at this sunrise, I cannot catch this. And there was this sadness. And now I understand this sadness was, was the movement uh, to go on for searching without having any knowledge that yes. I go with searching. And yeah. the interesting thing is, um, it seems now like it shrinks all together on one point. That's no point. Mm. It's not that something's falling away or something. It's it's sucked in this point. It's it's not possible to to describe this. What happens then, if if this is like it? It's not even a turnaround. But it's yeah. It's um. It's what was on my lips <laughs> mm -hmm. to, yes. to bring it in this room. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there can be a great sadness around the impossibility to grasp life. To but, grasp beauty is right in front of your eyes, but you yeah. can't have it, own it, grasp it. Yeah. Yeah. Can be quite sad. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, I'll just <laughs> go into the chat. <clears throat> okay, would you say that there can be a rage, anger, that can arise when it is seen that those things that were once thought after actually have absolutely no meaning or solidity? And can that anger turn into opinion? even though that too is meaningless. For example, I don't watch Hollywood movies because they are mostly full of shit. <laughs> oh yes, I mean, all of this would be what apparently happens. But of course, the person can get very frustrated and angry when it turns out that all its efforts were futile. And of course, what can happen when you, when you constantly think this person or the guru or something is holy and special and it turns out that he or she or what you were looking for completely isn't special then there can be an anger yeah i mean in a, in a way it's it's being angry with oneself to have wasted so much time and energy so it would somehow still be part of the dream me being able to do the right thing, but have, have not done the right thing. And now this has, is seen as bad or wrong. So could happen, yeah. But it's in a way just the opposite of the hope that those things were so promising. And suddenly they turn out to be, oh, well, they, they never gave me anything. Yeah. comment I saw duality and non-duality both are part of life well both don't exist as such but maybe you mean what I try to cover with real and unreal maybe some people would say duality is real and non-duality is just the absolute but in the end non-duality or well I don't like that word even but I would say it's it's real and unreal at the same time so it's neither dual nor the opposite one or non-dual. In a way, non-dual covers it, non and dual. I don't regard it as the opposite of duality. There's just no real duality. But of course, there isn't an opposite called non-duality automatically. <clears throat> Hey, Andreas, it's so stark. We were never the ones talking about this. Well, it can't be said. Oh, yeah, then there never was a, a real conversation. 
the sense of being something seems to be real to itself until it just can't find any place in any instance. Yes, that, that would be the story of liberation, so to speak. Yeah. But all, all what the me consists of, so to speak, is this sense of I am. Seen from that, it just feels like that. And there is no other way. The person can never unexperience itself because the person is experiencing. The person is the sense of presence. Even without a story, it just feels as if I'm here. Nothing can be done about that or needs to be done about that even. All the me's hopes and dreams is just a longing for what is. Well, yeah, in a way, yes and no. In a way, there is just this longing to, to become whole again. But on the other hand, to survive it. So the person doesn't really want to become one. It wants to have an experience of becoming one. So it doesn't really know what it's longing for. It's longing for something. It's not really longing for no thing. It's not really looking for death. It's looking for some kind of personal death, some kind of experience of something. Yeah. So it's both. I think it's a bit what William said. There is a longing for this, but when it comes to death, it's a bit like, well, oh no, not that far. Can't go further, can't be. It's just as if the apparent contradiction already the attests to the unreal unreality of itself. Sorry, I didn't get that. Heidi, do you want to say something or no? Okay, all right. Is everything that appears a kind of modulation of the same non-thing? Well, they just are not two. It's not that there is no thing and something appearing out of that. There's just what seems to be happening, which is timelessly not something by being exactly as it is. It's this, what we talk about all the time, so to speak, is what seems to be happening, not about something else, not about some hidden, absolute, mystical reality or something. This is no thing, very direct, this. That is no thing, not something else, not some abstract reality that we speak about. And it's neither real nor unreal, nor dual, nor non-dual. It's unknowable in the end. There is no relationship between this and the freedom in the story, but when it falls away, apparently, it seems it's more free in the story. Why? I have no idea. I don't even know if I'm more free in the story than, <laughs> than other people. <laughs> no, I'm, well, I kind of know what you mean, but there is, there is no real answer to this, to be honest. Okay, uh, Girish. Hello. Hello. Yeah, uh, nice talk always, uh, all beautiful people. Thank you. Uh, Anderson, I'm, uh, I'm attending uh, from uh, one or two months from Nothing Media or uh, your channel. 
uh, so i attended one your lecture uh, that in my spiritual practice also i am observing these things is that there uh, we means uh, where when we see nothing so is that we are giving all our control to the unconscious mind and no not really no no till we are uh, I, what i see we are doing anything just we have sense we are in presence just we are giving uh, we stop the uh, giving meaning for everything yeah but i would say there is no one who could do so meaning yes, there is no one yeah yeah there is no yeah there is no meaning when we stop giving meaning of life when we are coming into life we are life <laughs> this is also meaning yeah yes <laughs> thank you thank you so thank much you. thank you okay anita you want to say something um it's more a description of an experience um when i'm at my work i'm more in a kind of a role and i think you don't live in a, in a way of playing a role well yes there is no i playing a role but i'm not really sure what you mean Yeah, sometimes I see my work as a big joke. <laughs> um Yeah, and um yeah, there are puppets doing what they have to do. And um Yeah, I think it's more a way of of earning money, but it's not um that sounds good. It's not what I truly am or yeah. Well, yeah. it's not real. Of yeah, okay. That's true. It's not real. but uh, there isn't anything that we really are uh, yes i mean the thing is well, when there is someone or as long as there is someone and there can there is the sense of things not being real or not completely yeah real anymore there can be a sense of things being wrong because of that because it doesn't seem to really fit anymore but yeah of course you and your job and other people so to speak they aren't real so yeah yeah it's not important Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's not important but it's more a way of earning money. That's what seems to be happening. Yeah. No, earning money, having a job and earning money to buy food and all those things. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. That's wholeness. Mhm. Mm I mean there's nothing to get from work anyway. no some no yeah thank you thank you <clears throat> okay girish you want to talk again uh yes let uh, i'm uh, in your facebook friend and i saw uh, you uh, maybe in mountain lake photo uh 
I am just curious. Have you any story in mind? In in, in uh, now you are realize that nothingness and and have you experienced? Yeah, you have stories to share with us. Where you have story What about your of- life or traveling? You have beautiful moments, right, in your life. <laughs> you have story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have moments, but yeah, sometimes it's beautiful. Yes, because at first time I am uh, little uh, curious how he is living. <laughs> how I, I, I don't know about nothing. This. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I, t- I think I didn't really get it. uh no when i uh, i come in uh, in the first class we have we are near talking i have question in my, uh, i had a question in my mind that uh, how he is living is he is always saying nothing means nothing means oh i have no idea uh, oh uh, i don't know uh, so i am curious just i uh, have one question now that you answer that. have you any story of beautiful of our your in personal life no not really no i mean you mean what i what my daily life looks like beautiful uh, ha, ha, it means you have family or how yes. you spend you have um, your spend, right Uh, yes i have a, a well i have a normal life well i don't have it but yes i have a family and i go shopping and i cook food and i answer emails and uh, go for walks and drive around a lot that's basically my life if that was the question thank you thank you Okay, Susan. Uh, yeah, so is when all those you know thoughts and stuff about being somebody when that falls away it's like you it's almost like you're fully present in all this what is because sometimes it can sound like there the nothingness and it's the nothing is everything and so it's just this this world and you can take in this whole world more but lost somewhere in your thoughts or is in a separate self that you think you are is is yeah. that yeah in the end it's neither nor that's the thing i'm not lost in thoughts but i'm also not present so so not present yes no i'm not present no No. right there is no i to be present but you say there's just the presence and it's, it's almost like you know the 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 i we feel to be while we're in the body that that sense will always be there whatsoever because we're in a body experiencing or it's it's you know that's that's what's happening so it it's it's like that experience maybe becomes more full you know like the wholeness it, it's like maybe oh, no i would say it's exactly that experience to be something in the body that turns out to be completely illusory so i'm absolutely not present as such and yes one could say everything just is what it is and everything is totally full on itself and empty and meaningless at the same time but not for anyone there is no one present within that yeah yes and so it's like you're in the world but you're not of it right so it's it's like um but there's no you i i get that yes. but it feels more alive to me it doesn't uh, it's not dead at all you know sometimes it nearly yeah. you know we feel like what what's the point but it's is actually it's more life because you you accept the world fully because you know there's nothing else you know or it is just what what is and yes what is is totally itself and that's it 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 is total yes that's what maybe you mean with the life yeah 
but there is no one having an experience of being alive. But of course, when I say it's the end and, and it's the death of the me, it may sound a bit one-sided because yes, it's just, it's the death of an illusion in the first place. And what's left is full on, but also empty and meaningless. Yeah, but that sounds beautiful though, you know, full on, but empty, that's perfect. I mean. Oh, it is perfect, it's a natural reality. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, yes, yeah. yeah. Of course, what this message points to is perfection. And perfection is what already happens. It's this. This is full on itself already. It's not a state that I'm in. It's not a state that I've achieved and you didn't. All there is, is what seems to be happening. And that is full on itself. Thoughts, feelings, stones, clouds, the computer, the illusion to be I am, which is just full on itself. It's total, complete and empty and meaningless already. That's the natural reality. That is sitting in front of a screen. It's not mine, it's not yours. I'm not more there than you are. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, there's a, a, a question. Is talking about this and not talking about this exactly the same? Oh yeah, there's no, no real difference at least. Totally, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah. An absolute hopelessness is the greatest hope. Oh, well, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, the, but the person can uh, think that is that it is hope. When I become really hopeless, then maybe. Yeah. Okay, no duality, oh, sorry, I don't get that question. No duality and the movement of no me is part of <laughs> Illuminati. I'm sorry. Okay, does beauty trap us into separation? Because when I see a flower as more beautiful than the dog poop, then I think the flower is more holy and has more value than the dog poop. Yes, but it's not the blue, it's not the beautiful flower that does do that. It's the one who believes to experience the flower. The flower is just emptily and totally itself, same as dog poop. And, but the illusion, which is the illusion that something is more value than the other thing, which has come from the experience. <laughs> That's love one. The eye doesn't have any power over anything. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Lots of love. <laughs> yeah, got it. <laughs> Not really, of course. Can you talk about there's just verbing without a noun? Yeah, I mean, but even the verbing is um, unexperienced. But maybe what this statement tries to say, a noun is like that, that, that. But what we talk about is kind of very fluid. It's not real. It's what apparently happens, so to speak. Whenever I listen to this message, I also have the desire to speak like this radically. I also wish to, to share this message. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not sharing this message really. It's just what seems to be happening. Well, 
no one does that. No one is able to do that. Yeah. When I try to understand what you are saying, does this reinforce separation? Does listening and trying to understand undermine non-duality in the sense? Well, kind of. Not that you could differently, but of course, trying to understand and even listening from this separate standpoint that is the seeking, of course. And seeking apparently reinforces seeking, of course. It's you, I'm, I'm here, and there is Andrea speaking. What is he saying? What is he saying? That is the seeking. Maybe I can get it, understand it. Maybe there is something in there for me in what Andreas is saying. So I have to be here present and get something in order for me to take it away and be more happy tomorrow. That is the illusion. And in a way that is the, the confirmation of separation, apparently. The problem is that you can't do differently. So your, your attempt would be, ah, oh, well, I don't listen. I just stay with myself and relax. But th this would be the same setup. So whenever there is someone, there is no way out. There is some kind of doing. Some attempt to adopt the best position to gain the most out of life. Listening, not listening, thinking, thinking about something else, trying to not think, trying to be open, trying to just perceive, whatever. Those would all be seeking, all be attempts to gain the most out of this moment. That's the dream. You are talking, <laughs> but there is nothing to understand. <laughs> yes, oh, sorry, absolutely, totally. I'm not saying something. I don't pass on information. It's empty. Everything is utterly empty, including this speaking, totally. Okay, and that was something before, actually, that non-duality is the realization that nothing is knowable and nothing exists. No, I wouldn't say so. That's the problem with the word realization, because it's this hope that you or I, uh, that you can come to this realization. It sounds so utterly personal. Liberation which is a story, is just the melting away of this sense of separation. But nothing is realized in that. It's not that there is this moment of, hey, nothing is real, and then the person drops. It's not this realization that, well, there is nothing. Then I can also drop. No, it's just the melting away of the experience to be someone. There is no realization in this. There is no experience of arriving in this. It's just, there is no end. There isn't a moment in time when you arrive, when you have arrived. It's just fading out into emptiness. <laughs> Hi, Andreas. What do you mean by there's nothing to get from work? <laughs> I'm intrigued by that sentence. Ah, first. Hi. Nice that you join. Well, I think whatever the person does do or believes to do, the hope is that there is something deeper in that, as if life somehow f may, uh, work may fulfill me, for example. I'm not, I'm not just working for money. I'm working for 
a higher sense or a higher purpose or it fulfills me. That's what I meant, but that's just a dream. That's just what seems to be happening, going to work, going to the cinema, having food, but none of that is for anything, reading books, having insights, whatever. In that sense, there's nothing to get from anything. That's what I meant. And also from work. Because everything is already unknowable itself, irrespective of knowing. Yes, absolutely. The, the knower, the one who believes to experience and know things is already unknowable. I know myself is the dream. I know that I am is illusory. It's dream stuff. No one knows about their presence. The knower is illusory already. The knower is unknown already. It's just, yeah, well, I'm here. I know that I'm here. I know that I exist. No, it's a dream. Oh. Hi, Andreas. Just a hi from Brazil. We Skyped together years ago, apparently. Yes. Hello. Hi. All this mystery is unfolding as it is impersonally. Not to. Cheers. Yes, totally. Yeah. Many greetings to Brazil. And just this is it. Yes. But for no one. It's not someone knowing this. Ah, this is it. It's not coming from a recognition. This is it. But for no one. Okay, so this message coming out of you, pointing not to the person, yes. Who is listening when there is no one? <laughs> well, <laughs> no one is listening. What apparently happens is just listening, a function of listening, but without anyone listening and without anything being heard. There's just what seems to be happening, speaking listening, which is itself. Your thoughts on Jim Newman? My thoughts on Jim Newman, um, I like him. We know each other and I like him. I don't know if he likes me. <laughs> I had the impression. All right. Body is just functioning without experiencing itself. Yes, absolutely. That's what seems to be happening. The body doesn't experience itself. The experience would be self-awareness or self-consciousness believing to experience itself. The body is just blindly itself. Thoughts, feelings, reactions, walking around. Yeah, yeah. It is itself, but it doesn't experience itself from a separate standpoint. Yep. <clears throat> Is the illusion of a separate self because of personal memories? No. Memories appear in the now, but there may not be any past outside of the now. Yes, but the now is dreamt already. And the, the illusion to be someone isn't brought about by anything. So it's never the thoughts, it's never the stories, it's never the feelings. It's just the moment there is the sense of self-awareness. This I, so to speak, will find confirmation in everything just by only experiencing. I'm experiencing a tree, 
so therefore I am. I'm experiencing thoughts, therefore I am. It's never the thoughts, it's never the memories, it's never the beauty, it's just me mirroring itself in anything. So. That's the thing, it's just a complete artificial reality which can't go beyond itself. I experience something that is the artificial setup. And there isn't anything really out there confirming separation. It's just wherever the person looks, it sees separation. It sees itself. It sees separation by itself having itself being separate from everything. That's the funny thing. So whatever, whatever the person inquires into how it really is, whenever it inquires into the outside reality, whenever it inquires into the inside reality, it will always end up saying that there is something. It will always end up with itself. I am will always end up with, well, I am. It will never find proof for this message, maybe theoretically, conceptually, but experientially, it will always find proof for existence. And it can't go beyond that. It's impossible for the me to somehow meet no me. It would just be the dropping of the illusion, which happens by itself, which makes it obvious that it was an illusion. Before that, it would all just be circling around within the dream, which is not wrong. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But the person will not find proof for this. Question. This is completely incomprehensible and any sense of an understanding of it is just another story. Yes. So, so, <laughs> oh, so, so celebrate being in story and remember not to take anything too seriously. Well, I wouldn't suggest that, of course. What seems to be happening is relieved of the burden of the idea of self. And so there is a liberation in how the point of view that appears as self moves. Is that correct? Okay, I have to read it again, sorry. What seems to be happening is relieved of the burden of the idea of self. Uh, yes, kind of. And so there is a liberation in how the point of view is. Uh, yeah, but it would be illusory. That's the thing, because what seems to be happening was never burdened by the illusion of the self. Because the illusion of the self was or is what apparently happens as well. So it's not a real burden. Oh, yeah. <laughs> In, oh. Is this fading out of me the end of romantic love? Well, in a very funny way, it kind of is. Because I don't know what you re regard as romance or rom romanticism. I don't know. But to me, it was closely connected to the idea of finding the perfect partner, the one who will fulfill me. That was for me what, what romance was about. This idea of perfect companionship, deep meeting and all those things, having found the one. And yes, that kind of drops. I mean, in the end, a lot of those spiritual stories are romance as well, finding the absolute, total liberation, unconditional love, me melting with the divine and that stuff. And of course, there's a lot of longing and hopes and 
there's things involved and this all drops. So in that sense, I would say, yes, it's the end of that story of any kind of romantic story. Yeah. Andreas, your sense of humor is much better than Jim. <laughs> yeah, I'll let him know. Thank you. <clears throat> but he is more hair. <laughs> Which would you rather have? <laughs> hair or humor? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, good question, actually. But there's no choice, I guess. I loved having long hair, actually. Wow. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I had dreadlocks, actually, one time. All right. <clears throat> Everything Andreas says is so clear, but gets muddy by the filter of me, which I could hear it in its actual clarity. Oh, well, there wouldn't be really anything to hear anymore. But yes, what you describe as muddy is probably the attempt to translate this message into the personal reality. And yeah. Because that's what the person constantly does. It tries to, what does he mean? Andrea says, there is no one. But what does he want to say with this? Oh, nothing. I don't want to say anything with this. I'm just saying that there is no one. Yeah, but what do you mean? Uh, no, there is no yeah. yeah. That's the seeking for something deeper. There must be something deeper in this. There must be something to be found here. Mm, no, no, there isn't. Yeah, it's, it's something like this can be it. Oh, totally. It's implied. Well, this can't be it. This isn't it. Sorry. Mm, uh, yeah. Maybe there is something here for me, something that I can bring into my personal world and use it. Yes. That's the personal reality. Because the actual experience is, well, sorry, this isn't it. It's maybe nice and fun and kind of okay, but this is not what I'm really here for. Yeah. I'm here for something else for something bigger, something that's much more great, my fulfilled. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. <laughs> that's what I was meditating my whole life. That's what I was present for all the time. That's why I greeted the neighbors. Yeah. And so this should be it. This is what I did it all for? Yeah, impossible. Seen from the person, that's an utter impossibility that this is in. Not because of conditioning, it's its instant experience. I'm here, whoa, this is happening, but what am I actually here for? That's where the seeking energy comes from. Well, it's not it, but maybe it has to give me something. Where is it? Well, where is it what this has to offer me? Anywhere, here in the cinema, at work, with friends, with enemies. It's always, it's always exactly like this. This isn't it, but maybe it can offer me something. Something deeper, something for me. It never does. It's always empty. Yeah. It never works. That's why the seeking seems to go on. But this is it. This is all there is. And there is nothing missing. It's whole and complete. Mm. <laughs> it won't get better. <laughs> Go 
good news. Mm. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you. Is emptiness also empty? Well, you know, emptiness is just one of those words which sound as if there is something, some kind of circumstance, as if there is a certain kind of reality, and now we call it emptiness or fullness or wholeness or whatever, but there is no ness. This is not a ness. So. Is the seeing of this a kind of remembering? Hmm. I mean, you know, you can say, you can describe it in all kinds of ways, but not really. It's not remembering something, but on the other hand, it's turning out that it is so natural and it was always the case that there never was a problem and there never was anything lost. So in that sense, maybe, why not? But on the other hand, what we speak about is totally fresh. You don't even need to remember something from the past. It's not remembering something, oh, it's like, oh, well, okay, now I remember. No, because it's utterly fresh also. Okay, and the nice one, romantic love just happens. Uh, yes, yes. Well, let's put it like this. Love is what happens. And the person would stand outside of it, observe it and say, I want to have this romantic love as well. <laughs> yes, love happens, being in love happens. Which would, which would be utterly whole and complete. It just wouldn't be attached of this idea that this is something that will fulfill me. I mean, some people would say that being in love itself is something that gives something. Having certain feelings, certain experiences. Okay, now I missed the chant. <clears throat> Where was I? Mm -hmm, I had this. I had, okay, if I read your books, <laughs> will, will this make more sense? Does reading the books cover more than a video will? Well, to be honest, <laughs> not really. Actually, I would say, no, it's just like having like more talks just on paper, but no, it won't make more sense then. The me seeking to understand this is only really a constantly failing way to avoid what's being suggested. Kind of, yes, yeah. Well, it's the very seeking which is part of the separate setup, so to speak. And it, it's not an, a, a way to come closer. Seeking is just seeking. It's just circling around within that loop. It's of no use, so to speak. In a famous video clip, Charles Manson states he is nothing. Do you think you are talking about the same no thing? He seems very convincing to me. Yes, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. it. Didn't really convince me, to be honest. But what do you want to say? Is he wrong? Well, no, of course not. <clears throat> so our soulmate is nothing. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. 
no want or need. Uh, yes, nothing is wanted and nothing is needed in order to become a fulfilled me. Totally. That completely drops the hope that there is anything in this apparent world that will give me something or that, that may bring about more than what apparently happens. No thought, no feeling, no person, no experience. It's just, yes. But not by someone having realized this, just by the turning out that this I doesn't exist or by the melting away of this I. It's not coming out of wisdom or something like that. It's just that this energetic setup, this felt sense of, but I need something. I still need to see, for example, it just collapsed. That ultimate lover, the romance turns out to be the utter emptiness. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> it doesn't matter either anyway because you will never be having your own life anyway in the dreaming oh yeah there isn't one's own life totally that's the dream me and my life my presence that's what the person would regard as life me when i'm there <laughs> being aware it's not anyone's <clears throat> okay, I just do a few more from the chat, but I think we will stop quite on time. I see there are quite more comments, so I won't really do them. But okay, we still have four minutes. Is there any validity to saying there is more dimension to this than meets the eye? Does saying this is it exclude possibility in the apparent timeline. Well, there is, <laughs> in that sense, there is no validity to anything that's being said. And when I say this is it, I don't refer to this moment. When I say this is it, I don't mean all there is is this moment or all there is is what you are aware of. Because when I say this is it, it actually means no thing. It doesn't say something. It doesn't create, it doesn't create boundaries saying this is and all the other things aren't. It doesn't say all oh, there is is this moment and tomorrow and uh, past doesn't exist, for example. No. All there is is what seems to be happening, but it's totally inexperienced. It's timeless, it's spaceless, and it doesn't know what itself, it doesn't know what it means. So it doesn't say, all there is is this, and everything else is dreamt. No, this is already dreamt as well, so to speak. So has anything ever happened? And No, of course not, but no one knows this. Yeah. <clears throat> it's all in the dream and that the dream has a certain reality just like the idea of tomorrow seems to flow within the timeline and can bring new vistas wise kind of yes oh yes there's just what seems to be happening timelessly it doesn't, it doesn't know any discrimination between tomorrow and past. And it's blindly itself, totally. Yeah. Perception can shift and reorient as well within the timeline, apparently, yeah. Okay, I see, I just think last question. The concept you are talking about is so similar to the concept of the movie Matrix. What you call this is a matrix? Well, yes and no. The problem, hello? Well, the difference to the matrix is that in the matrix, 
you again have someone who sees it. You have the step from being in the matrix and seeing how it truly is. And that's a deeply spiritual picture. One me coming from moving from the dream to the truth. In that sense, it's, it's in that sense, it's quite different from the picture in the movie. Because what, what, what this message is saying is that the one who looks is the illusion. Nothing else, so to speak. All right, I think we leave it here. Um, I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. <laughs> All right, so there's no, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so there's no message, there's nothing to do and nothing to not do. There's no suggestion of any kind because what happens, what apparently happens is just naturally whole and complete already exactly as it is. There is no kind of another additional personal realization and it's absolutely not needed that I need to see that I still need to arrive is a complete dream. No, of course you don't need to see something. You don't need to arrive. There is no you. It's just this, simply, plainly, naturally. Thank you very much for joining. I wish you a lovely day and a lovely time. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you. Have a nice day. Bye. Hey, Andy, good to see you, man. Are you still here? Is he gone? No, he's gone. Thank you, Andreas. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Emerson. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Emerson. Thank you.